Most of the materials used in this video are available as a kit from Jameco Electronics. Throughout all the electronics projects I've put together, I always use one thing. No, there's no solder on breadboards. Those are handy, but not what I meant. Resistors. Uh, maybe, but that's not what I'm getting at. What I'm talking about is these. Through hole parts. Components that have leads designed to go through holes in a board and solder to the other side. But you won't find many through hole components in newer consumer electronics. Instead, these designs use surface mount parts, which are soldered directly to the surface of the PCB. You'll often hear this format referred to as SMD, meaning surface mount device, or SMT, referring to surface mount technology. Not super micro tiny, but that was my first guess. A lot of newer IC designs are only available in surface mount packages. So it's a good idea to get familiar with this stuff if you want to experiment with the latest and greatest chips. These little guys are designed to be handled by machines, and you can tell by their size, but thanks to them, we're able to cram a lot of circuitry into a really small space, like say in a cell phone. Most SMT resistors and capacitors come in one of three standard sizes which are 1206, 0805, and 0603. Each number specifies the part's length and width. Of course, there are other sizes, like this totally teeny 0402 resistor. So you might think, well, that's nice. Too bad I could never solder something that small. Ah, but you can. Or so I've heard. I'm actually new to all this SMD business myself. But I think it's about time I got familiar with it. I figured I'd get my feet wet using the relatively large 1206 size packages. Even at this size, they're still quite eensy. As a test circuit, I'll build a simple light-controlled oscillator, aka a phototheremin, based around this 555 timer chip in an SO8 SMD package, and I'll solder it all to a small SMD prototyping board. To assist with the construction, I'll also be using plenty of light for starters, a pair of fine point tweezers, solder wick, some 28 gauge wire, a magnifier loop, and some adhesive poster putty, uh, aka fun tack or blue tack. Mine isn't blue, but it still works well for holding the parts in place while soldering. A small lump of adhesive will keep the chip from sliding around while I work. Very little solder is needed for each pin. I'm making do with 
0.032 inch diameter solder here, but 0.015 would probably be much easier to work with as you only need a tiny bit of solder at a time. I was worried the putty would elevate the chip too far from the board, but everything seems to be in order. clip through hole lead works well as a short jumper and wire wrapping or magnet wire comes in handy for the longer connections. I wasn't able to find any surface mount photocells but a small through hole version adapts pretty well for this. Right, that about does it for all the really small stuff just have to connect the power and speaker leads and I am ready for a test run. It's a pretty little jewel, isn't it? But uh, we don't know if it works. Didn't put any power switch on it, so simply connecting the battery will turn it on. Wow, that nine volt is uh, by far the largest component I've got here. Didn't really think about that going in. It would be nice if I could replace it with something like a coin cell. But besides that, have you ever seen a lapel pin that can do this? Not too often, I'm guessing. To get started building your own surface mount circuitry, Check out the SMD Experimenters kit at jameco.com.